And um, I have been lecturing about this topic about lifestyle and its effect on chronic disease conditions for many, many years. And um, every couple of years I changed up my lecture to stay current and stay really high up in the end with most of the current research. And this is a fairly new lecture I gave you. This is a little over a year ago in Anaheim in front of a few, few thousand people and they all seem to like it. And um, out of all the lectures I have done in the past 10 years, this is my absolute favorite lecture. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is a little bit about lifestyle and its effect on chronic disease conditions like cancer and cardiovascular disease. Um, and then we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about whole food supplementation and why as a physician, um, I consider it mandatory today to supplement your diet with whole food concentrates because number one, we're not getting enough fruits and veggies in, we're in our diet. And number two, the, the nutrient density of the produce that we're eating today is not equivalent to what it was you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Even with good crop rotation, we're still losing the nutrient density in the produce that we're eating. And so I consider whole food supplementation to be absolutely mandatory. And we're going to talk about the research behind that. And then what I'm going to do in the second half of the lecture is pivot. And I'm just going to tell you a few of literally you know, the thousands of stories I've heard over the years of what happens to people's bodies when they um, make simple changes, when they put whole food concentrates into their body. It's absolutely amazing. When you guys hear these stories, they'll absolutely blow you away. They'll blow you away. And it all kind of ties them together. And so um, I've actually entitled this talk, Apple or Scalpel, The Lifestyle Disease Connection, or Stuff They Don't Teach in Med School. And you know, it's been my experience over the last you know, decade or so that there's just this real huge disconnect between lifestyle, you know, what we eat and how we move, and all of these chronic disease conditions, again, from cardiovascular disease to cancer. And uh, particularly in med school, you know, as, as med students, we're really not taught anything about prevention. You know, we're taught about disease. And when you find a disease, you either cut it out or you treat it with drugs. And there's a place for that. I've not spent many, many years doing that. And you know, while we have probably the best medical system in the entire world, I think you guys would agree with me but that the medical system that we have is really broken. You know, it is a system that is designed to take care of you when you're really ill. And so the whole impetus behind this lecture is to empower you with the knowledge and hopefully the enthusiasm uh, and the inspiration to take healthy back, to really know that you can take control of your health, no matter what your health journey looks like right now. Um, you can make significant changes in, in you know, what you do and in your lifestyle that don't have to be very complicated. And so um, that's kind of the impetus, again, behind uh, me putting up this lecture. And um, I always start off by talking about the Okinawan population. You know, because they're long considered to be some of the healthiest individuals in the world. You know, they live an average lifespan of at least 81 years. And I think, gosh, I think this study is now some 60 years into the study. And what the researchers have found out is that only about one third of their longevity can be attributed to their genetics or their genes, right? But it's their healthy lifestyle. It's their healthy lifestyle that accounts for about two thirds of their life expectancy. You know, with the key to healthy aging is maintaining healthy lifelong weight through diet and exercise. But what I think is significant about this entire study is that it really does prove that our lifestyle can trump our genetic inheritance. <laughs> I feel the need to qualify but this I'm slide. Fine. So, hey, <laughs> <laughs> with me. So, so those of you who know me and have seen my lectures for years, I have had this slide in my lecture for years. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never be the same again, so I know. <laughs> You missed the hat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. So Before you make assumptions about me, I'm a very apolitical guy, but I just could not help myself. <laughs> and I have to tell you, it's really interesting to see how this slide plays out, depending on what state I'm lecturing in. Because sometimes you get a lot of laughter, and sometimes you can hear a pin drop. So, uh, pretty fascinating. But anyway, it's true. Our lifestyle can trump our genetic inheritance. You know, we don't have to be victims of the genes that we inherited from our parents and their parents and their parents. Um, you know, simply by engaging in healthy lifestyle, you can actually turn good genes on and bad genes off. And that's not only good just for you, but they've actually shown that you can pass those genetic traits up to two, th two to three generations beyond you. Okay, so think about this, particularly people who are in childbearing age. I know we have a lot of young people here. Um, you know, simply by engaging in a healthy lifestyle today, you can potentially impact your family's past generations of chronic disease conditions, perhaps eradicating them for your future family's generations to come. I mean, just because um, your great grandma had breast cancer 
and grandma had breast cancer and mom had breast cancer doesn't mean that you're destined to get, to get that cancer. You know, we know through the study of something called epigenetics that exercising and eating properly will turn good genes on and bad genes off, right? You know, you're, you're hardwired to your DNA. Now, you cannot change your DNA, but what you can change are the switches on the outside of your DNA that dictate whether that gene is going to get turned on or not. And we know that lifestyle, exercising and eating properly, has the ability to modulate those switches in a fascinating field of epigenetics. And so we know that, that the two big pillars are health, right, or exercising and eating properly. When I talk about exercising, I'm talking about just moving, walking. Um, because what they have found just within the last year, year and a half, statistics have shown that if you sit four or more hours consecutively on a fairly regular basis, that is equivalent to the health detrimental effects of smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. True. You know, the sedentary behavior is the new smoking of our era. And you know, it increases cardiovascular disease by 125%. Uh, increases risk from death from any cause by 50%. Okay, so movement is key. And this is a fairly recent study. This is a study that, a very large study that, was, that came out of Canada. And it was so profound that it was a, a study that was published in their equivalent to our JAM, a journal of the American Medical Association. It's a Canadian version. And what it was is that the researchers went and looked at between 40 and 50 randomized controlled trial studies on lifestyle and its effect on breast cancer. And when they parsed through thousands of pages of data, they came up with like a, you know, Dave Letterman's top 10 list of game changers that lifestyle has an impact for breast cancer. And this is the biggest finding they found. And this is all hot off the press. Out of all the lifestyle factors, physical activity has the most robust effect on breast cancer outcomes. Okay, whether preventing breast cancer in the first place or preventing it from reoccurring if you've already had it. Mm. Okay, so movement is key. Moving blood, getting toxins out of your body is really, really key. Okay, but you cannot compete with what you eat, right? You cannot out-exercise a bad diet, right? If you go to the gym or you have a hard CrossFit session or whatever that is for an hour or whatever, and then you head to Taco Bell to refuel, <laughs> you might as well have not even gone to the gym in the first place, right? Because what you put in here absolutely complements what you do in physical activity. So, we need to eat healthy. The question is what? And we've heard about it for years and years. It's so true. The more plants that you put into your body, the more fruits and veggies you put into your body, not only the healthier you're going to be, but the better you're going to actually feel. You're actually going to feel better, and that's been statistically shown over and over again. And, I, and I'm not here to say that you know, everybody's got to go out and be a vegan you know, and eat bark off of trees all day. And I, I don't do that myself. But we know that the more plants that you put in the body, the healthier you're going to be. And it's that combination of exercise combined with uh, plant-loaded diets that contributes to a lot of the decrease in a lot of the chronic disease conditions that you hear about, that you read about, that perhaps affect you and your family. And I've highlighted some of these in red because they're pretty common. Perhaps you struggle with, uh, struggle with this, or you know people who struggle with things like asthma or cancer, uh, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, MS, the arthritis. You know, those diseases, even though I've highlighted them in red, actually all of these diseases have a common denominator that links them all together. And that's something called oxidative stress. So I just want to spend a few minutes explaining what that is, because that's kind of cutting its stuff in medicine today. So. When we talk about oxidative stress, we start off by talking about oxygen. And you know, similar to when you cut an apple in half, and you leave that apple exposed to oxygen or room air over a period of time, what happens to the apple? It turns brown. Well, it becomes brown. It becomes oxidized, right? It ages quicker. Well, the parallel process is actually going on inside of our bodies as we take in oxygen. While we need oxygen, it can act as a double-edged sword in producing these things called free radicals that can accelerate diseases, and it can accelerate um, the aging process. Another way of looking at oxidative stress is comparing it to a car engine. You know, a car engine utilizes gasoline to combust and make a usable form of energy to make that car run, but out of that external combustion, you know, comes a toxic byproduct in the form of exhaust. What our body's engines are called mitochondria, right? It's these ovoid organelles that exist inside the cells of our bodies. These are the powerhouses of our body. Okay, this is where energy from the food that you eat combined with the oxygen that you breathe in, 
goes into making a usable form of energy to make your body run, and that's something called ATP. You guys remember that from biology, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Along with the Krebs cycle. Yes. Along with the Krebs cycle. Good for you. There is a test after this, you guys. All right? so, the reason I put this up is that, that this is not an airtight process, right? Not all those molecules are utilized in the production of energy in the form of ATP. And so what happens is that you end up with a spillover effect of these highly charged reactive oxygen species, otherwise known as free radicals. Mm. And these free radicals, if they're not effectively neutralized, they very quickly escape from the mitochondria. And then they begin to do damage to our nearby healthy cells, silently, without you actually feeling it. Now, free radicals can attack the membranes that surround our cells and tissues. They can attack the proteins inside our lives, which is key if you exercise, if you're an athlete. Um, free radicals can attack our DNA, our genetic material. And real importantly, whether you're just getting up and going to work, um, all the way up to the elite athlete, cumulatively over a period of time, if these free radicals are not effectively neutralized, they'll begin to attack the very mitochondria that formed them. Now the reason that's important is because mitochondria do not have the ability to effectively repair themselves from that kind of damage, similar to other cells inside of our bodies. And so cumulative damage to your mitochondria begin to shut down your mitochondria. And the reason that's important is because those are your energy producers, right? And loss of energy production is gonna affect you again with you just getting up going to work all the way up to the elite athlete. And this is a cumulative process. The research shows that that kind of damage can take years to actually manifest itself in disease processes. I mean, think about this for a minute, okay? Think about it. How many people do you know that are too tired to perform even the most basic tasks of daily life? You know, perhaps you struggle with this, or you know with people who struggle with getting through the day. You know, you wake up at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning with a lot of energy, and by one or two o'clock in the afternoon, game over. And that has, doesn't have to be any of us by any stretch of the imagination. So neutralizing this byproduct of our daily metabolism is important to do so, and we can do so, because we all come equipped to us. We are all born with this complex internal enzymatic and non-enzymatic cascade that acts as a frontline defense system in attempting to neutralize all these free radicals. And I have to tell you that, like, one of my favorite parts of this lecture is me looking at you guys <laughs> like that slide. I mean, this is like an incredible Facebook moment. It's just the blank stares that I get to see that you don't get to see. It's just hilarious. Trust me, I am not going to go through this. I'd have to go back to med school to remember all this stuff. But the reason why I put this up is that even though God gave us a system that attempts to neutralize these free radicals, the research is very clear that the system that we're born with cannot function by itself. The system that we're born with will eventually fail on its own, unless it's properly fortified. And we fortify this system, well, it's through our diets, but it's specifically diets that are rich in fruits and veggies, and specifically the rainbow of colors. You know, the reds, the greens, the purples, the yellows, because inside of those colorful pigments exist these very powerful plant chemicals called phytonutrients. And what I mean by phytonutrients is basically plant-based nutrition. Right? It's thousands and thousands of powerful antioxidant substances found in all the fruits and veggies, and this is the key. All those plant nutrients are working together synergistically in very small amounts to be extremely powerful in the human body. So load up your plates with plants. The question is how many, and just within the last three or four years, based on the most current epidemiological and observation studies, it's now recommended that we should be consuming seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day, and a serving is roughly the size of your fist. And I scroll up every day. Right? It's just not a couple of days a week that you get that amount in your body. That's seven days a week. That's every single day for the rest of your life. You need to fill your body with that. And because I know I've got a bunch of athletes here, and I, I actually have another lecture I do on athlete, athletic performance on this subject. I pulled some slides over because they're pretty remarkable. That based on kilocalorie output and exercise, individuals who approximate 60 to 90 minutes or more of physical activity cumulatively within a 24-hour window, this is how many fruits and veggies you should be eating every single day to combat the stress that your body goes through when you exercise. Yeah, wow. Real quiet out there. <laughs> 16 to 18 servings. It's based on kilocalorie output, BMI, and a few others of formula. Okay? So forget this number. Go back to 7 to 13 servings, the minimum amount. Do you or your families get seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day. Are they picked vine ripen, 
where they're most nutrient dense. And is it in, are they in the rainbow of colors, the vast array of colors? Um, that's important too, because um, you know, over the years, over the last decade or so of lecturing internationally, I have literally spoken to thousands of vegans, thousands of vegetarians, you know, thousands of people who juice, and that's all healthy living, right? But take, for instance, people who juice. Well, juicing's healthy. People who juice typically juice the same five, six, seven, eight things, right? It's the variety, the rainbow of colors that's just as important as the quantity. So unless you get that quality and that quantity in your diet each and every day for almost every single one of us, you know what? At one point or another, there's going to exist some form of a gap in our nutrition. And the traditional way that we've been bridging or narrowing that nutritional gap has been through the consumption of all these synthetic, isolated laboratory-made vitamins and our multivitamins that we see everywhere on counters today. But very clearly, within the last four, five, six, seven years, study after study after study is now showing that taking these isolated synthetic forms of these vitamins, like vitamin C, when we're taking multivitamins, not only do they not have an effect in human physiology, but in some instances, they actually do more harm than good. And that's the reality of the situation we face today. Okay, and if you want the citations for that, let me know afterwards. I'll be happy to give them to you. Um, and really the bottom line that you really have to think about is that we're really not talking about vitamin deficiency so much in this country anymore. You, know, you don't see scurvy, you don't see beriberi, right? What we really have a deficiency of is getting more whole raw produce into our bodies. We need to get more fruits and veggies into our bodies. And in fact, um, neither the American Heart Association nor the American Institute for Cancer Research recommend vitamin supplements to reduce cardiovascular disease or cancer. Okay, but what they do recommend is simply in their statements is simply put more fruits and veggies in your diet because eating more fruits and veggies will decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. Putting more fruits and veggies into your body will decrease your potential risk for getting cancer, okay? It's the health nutrition that you get, not from vitamins and minerals, but the plant chemicals, the carotenoids, the polyphenols, things that you don't get in a multivitamin, that you get from plants. That's the real healthy part of the plant, not the vitamins and minerals. It's the plant chemicals, the phytonutrients. And here's another slide I pulled over from Athlete Talk. Um, and I actually started talking about this because you probably 10 years ago when there's some early pilot studies that typically are not well designed, but it kind of raised a red flag. Well, this is a very well designed, randomized controlled trial study that was just published in the last few years. We're showing that people who exercise, athletes that are taking these synthetic vitamins, like vitamin C, like emergency, or vitamin E, where they're finding out that the synthetic form of these vitamins is mechanistically shutting down the adaptive health responses you should be getting from exercise, ultimately leading to a decrease in training efficiency. Wow. So they are actually hampering your body's ability to adapt and get stronger and faster. Wow. <laughs> Big deal. And you'll hear my story, um, talking about Iron Man, you'll hear my story at the end as it totally relates to this. I wish I had known this years and years ago, but we just didn't have this information. So the bottom line is nature knows best. You know, what we have in nature is far superior to any man-made vitamin supplement produced in laboratories today. Good example of this is take a look at an apple. You know, an apple alone is well over some 10,000 phytonutrients, some 850 of which have already been named and identified. So follow me with the logic on this, because this is important to understand. That now, with over 12,500 phytonutrients that have already been named and identified, and all the fruits and veggies around us, which of all those plant chemicals, right, is selected by scientists, is removed from that plant source, taken to a laboratory, is chemically synthesized and end up in a standard isolated vitamin or multivitamin. So scientists versus mother nature is making the determination of which of all those tens of thousands of plant chemicals is the most, is the most bioactive inside the human body, but by doing so, they've extracted that single nutrient from its natural synergistic role that it plays with tens of thousands of other plant chemicals. Okay, think about this for a minute. Would you rather have the nutrients from this up here make the determination what's healthy to your body, or this down here, you know, man-selected isolates from that particular fruit of veg. You know, why are we tinkering around with what Mother Nature's already provided for us in its natural whole form? And so the bottom line is, based on all the research, the research that we know today, that makes a whole heck of a lot more sense to be bridging the nutritional gap with whole raw food sources that contain most of your vitamins and minerals. But like I've already said a couple of times, it's way beyond vitamins and minerals. It's the tens of thousands of other plant chemicals, the carotenoids, the polyphenols, the flavonoids that you get in fruits and veggies that you do not get in a multivitamin. So bridge the gap with food, 
okay, versus bridging the gap with what I just talked about, which I consider no food, which are these synthetic isolates that short of a deficiency disease, our bodies simply don't know what to do with, other than excrete it or store it in the body. And so just as you know, a gym or a fitness facility provides equipment uh, for us to get physically fit, there's a product on the market today that I and literally thousands of healthcare providers around the world recommend to get nutritionally fit. Um, or what I like to see is getting fit at a cellular level. And the product that I've been taking and recommending um, is Juice Plus. The reason for that is because of the science. Um, and I have a pretty bad, big research background. Uh, it's the most thoroughly researched brand name nutritional product available today in the world bar none. So let's talk about that research um, just for a few minutes. Um, because I want to. <laughs> and I have the microphone. <laughs> I will not bore you, trust me. I'll, I'll just hit up a few here with that. But the, as a healthcare provider, as a physician, this is what got me. Um, this product is backed by years and years and years of independent third party research, which means that the company provides the product to the research institution, and then they step back and they wait for the result of that study, either good or bad results. So the product is removed from the auspices of the potential bias of a company doing research on its own product. Right, it's saying to a third party institution to remove that inherent bias. And then when the study's done, it's submitted to peer reviewed journals for publication. These journals have a peer review board. Um, I sat on one for a few years, so typically made up of MDs, PhDs, and other scientists. And you basically scrutinize that study before you accept it for publication. You, know, you look at the methodology of the study, you look at the design of the study, and if it was done properly, you accept it and publish it in your journal. If not, you turn it back out to be redone properly. And that's another layer of scrutiny the company puts the product through the peer review process. And a great majority of these studies that are, are published adhere to what's called gold standard research, which is randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. That's top-tier research. That's the kind of research that I look for in my medical journals for legitimacy. And you know what? I don't know about you guys, but the, the nutritional supplement industry is like the wild, wild west. You know, it's completely unregulated. It's, it's like every other day there's a new nutritional supplement popping up on the market today, you know, or whatever. And because I've been doing this over 10 years, people have gotten access to my Facebook account or you know, email or whatever. And I get probably once or twice a month uh, from somewhere in the world, somebody will send me a supplement that popped up and wanted my opinion about it. And for me, it's simple. Because, you know, you navigate to their website and, and you skip through all those testimonials. You look for the research tab. Because if it's legitimate research, that's what it's going to tell you is really going to do in your body. And it's amazing, you guys, to me, how many nutritional products that are out there today that have absolutely zero research. None. Right? I mean, they got a whole boatload of test, you know, testimonials, right? You know, Grandma ran the 40 and 4-4 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Show me that one. Sure. But no research to back it up at all. And it's amazing, I can't mention product names, but, but so many of the products that are out there that say they have research, they actually pay the journal to get their study published. They actually buy their way into journals that accept payment for publication so they can say they have published research. And that is the fundamental difference between the research done on this product and all the others on the market today. Because I'll tell you right now, there's absolutely no way in the world you can buy your way into getting published in top pediatric journal in this country. You cannot buy your way into getting published in the Journal of the American you know, Heart College of Cardiology. You cannot buy your way into getting published in the top sports medicine journal in this country. That's the fundamental difference between this product and all the others that are on the market today. This company does top quality research at top quality institutions, and it deserves the right to be accepted for publication based on the quality of that research and the results. Mm -hmm. Okay, big, big difference. I actually got to update this. And it's now it's 23 years of published research, now 37 published studies. It's been studied in eight countries and four continents around the world at really bad universities like Yale. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really ugly four letter word. I have to say it every time I do this lecture. So. But this was huge. So, all kidding aside, this is just a, a shorthand, this is a short list of some of the companies that have done research on Juice Plus in their patient populations. Okay, Yale, Vanderbilt, right? Yeah. Medical University of Graz, MD Anderson Cancer Center, Numerous Children's Clinic in Jacksonville. I know these institutions. These are high end research institutions doing research on this product. That is unheard of in this industry. You know, this company challenges itself at high-end institutions and doesn't go to some obscure institution to get research done. It's challenged 
at these institutions. That was a big, big selling point for me as a physician with a research background. And so this is a very broad net of what the research shows. We're going to hit on just a little bit of it here in a little bit. But what the research shows is that juice plus does reduce oxidative stress, which we talked a little bit about. Reduces systemic inflammation, which we're going to talk a little bit more here in a minute. Yeah. Um, supports a healthy immune system. The research shows it's protective of DNA, supports cardiovascular wellness, and supports healthy skin and gut. The reason why I put this broad list up is that, you know what, there isn't a single pharmacy or drugstore that you could walk into and purchase something, nor is there a prescription that I or any do the other doctor anywhere in the world could, that could write for you, that in totality would do every single one of those things that I just listed off to you by. It simply doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It simply doesn't exist. And that's coming from a pharmacist right now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it's true, this is, this is absolutely the script if I could write for you, I would. Salivar in a capsule. The biggest side effect that you get from that script is good health. That was a joke. <laughs> okay, so this is the key. It's 30 different fruits, veggies, and berries and capsules. That's the rainbow I'm talking about, right? This is the variety of color that I talk about getting into your body each and every day because it's a capsule and it comes in a bottle. It's not a vitamin supplement. Okay, you do get most of your vitamins and minerals, but you're getting them from the plant source. Right? The form in which our bodies are meant to recognize and utilize, but like I've already said numerous times, way beyond vitamins and minerals, it's the tens of thousands of plant chemicals that you get from eating things like bilberry and black currant. I mean, who goes around eating that stuff every day? <laughs> right? I don't even know where to buy it. I don't even know where to buy it. Right? But these, amongst all these other plants, are loaded up with all these plant chemicals that are so beneficial to cardiovascular health and cognitive function, you name it. That's the new frontier of health and plants, is the plant chemicals, okay? That's what they're finding out is the most important part of a plant, or the plant chemicals. So, I cannot mention competing products in my lecture. <laughs> I'll leave that up there as a hint for you guys. <laughs> so, um, so I was curious, and I actually came up with this slide like 10 years ago, and it went viral, got translated in all these different languages, because it's pretty shocking. And, and it's still applicable today. I wanted to know what was in a popular children's vitamin supplement. And it's really hard to find the ingredients. You know, when you navigate to the website, you navigate to the website, and you try to look for the ingredient tab. I mean, you got to go through Wilma and Barney and Dino. <laughs> I have not mentioned the product yet. I'm just letting you know. But it's, it's absolutely amazing, you guys, what kids are getting. Look at this. I mean, all of these things that have artificial sweeteners, artificial colors and dyes, which are now making a link to autistic spectrum disorder, right? Um, hydrogenated oils, all these synthetic laboratory made vitamins and minerals, and a warning label. Warning label. Okay, so Juice Plus has chewables, not only uh, for kids but adults, and in the chewables are fruits and veggies, but none of that other junk. No artificial sweeteners, colors, and dyes, no hydrogenated oils, and you know what? There is a warning label on the back of the chewables. It says keep out of reach of children so they don't eat the whole bag. <laughs> right? Think about this for a minute. Think about this. This is a Ziploc bag, not a safety cap. Okay. A kid can sit down and eat an entire bag of these on the right and not die. They'll be on the pot for like two or three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I hear these stories all the time. It's concentrated food. <laughs> but if you really, and, and all you poison control because you know what your child can die if they eat just a fraction of that bottle over there as an ER doctor I can remember taking care of these kids coming into the ER eating a half a bottle of those things they come in you got to put a big old tube into their stomach and pump a bunch of black charcoal in there to bind up all those chemicals because they can die wow. so think about this for a minute right and that is the difference between chemicals on the left and food on the right which would you rather you know, have your families have in their bodies? Right? Okay, so basically it's yabba dabba don't versus yabba dabba do. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know who this is at this point, I cannot help you. So. 
I do have to say, I know I've got a lot of millennials in here, some, the younger crowd, still doesn't know who that is. <laughs> this is old people here. So go to the Cartoon Network and figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk to you guys about this because this dovetails on this. This is a great program the company has, and they put a lot of money invested, a lot of money is invested in this program, is the Children's Health Study. And it's actually now um, the largest children's observational study in the entire world. They've approached about a million subjects, uh, some close to 300,000 which have already finished the program. And what it is is that a child anywhere from the age of four up to and through um, a full-time college student can get Juice Plus for free for up to four years with an adult sponsor. You just fill out an occasional questionnaire. And the results that are coming back, and the kids that have finished the program is amazing. The kids that have finished the program have far fewer days where they're getting sick, they're not getting ill, they're not getting coughs and colds, they're not missing school, they're not having to see their pediatrician. In fact, I've heard stories where pediatric offices are actually calling the houses saying, hey, we haven't seen you guys in over years, everything okay? Yeah, it's not getting sick anymore. True story. Um, and it's just a phenomenal program, you guys. So, and the companies invest a lot of money. The other thing that's really neat about this program, they found is that the kids who enter the program craving you know, sugary sweet stuff that they're addicted to come out of the program not craving that anymore. And they're actually craving fruits and veggies in their diet. They're actually craving things like broccoli and spinach, if you can believe that. It's so true because their bodies are being reprogrammed in a healthy way. So if you're not familiar with the person, in, or if you're not familiar with the program, get with the person invited you, because it's like a buy one, get one free. And again, the companies invest a lot of money into this program to get kids healthy, because I think you guys would agree with me that childhood obesity in this country is going to kill us if we don't do something about it. And this company's got this, they've got a foot in the future. So another product I want to mention is the Juice Plus Complete Shake Mix. This is a completely plant-based protein shake mix. The primary plant protein is non-GMO, non-genetically modified water wash soy, which retains all the soy. It's got lots of good fiber, it's gluten-free, uh, no, uh, low fat, no cholesterol, non-dairy, no coloring is preserved as it's low glycemic and 100% vegan. Now, when I mention the word soy, so many people's antennas go up, right? right? My doctor says, stay way away from that, right? Or my natural path says it's like the powder of the devil or something. <laughs> True story. Non-genetically modified water washed soy, which retains the whole soy, and the highly fractionated, um, highly acidified, highly processed soy that has been around for years, of which there are issues. But it's so safe that, that nutritionists from the American Cancer Society and the American Institute for Cancer Research endorse the product and recommend. So I want to go back to that, um, that Canadian study I mentioned in the beginning with lifestyle and its effect on breast cancer out outcome. And this is just published within the last year. Um, this is thousands of pages of data. When they went through, this is another big finding they found was this. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that soy products need not be avoided in breast cancer patients. Wow. How long have we heard I was taught as a medical student, as a resident? No way. This is hot off the press stuff. So again, if there's ever an issue, then why in the world would MD Anderson Cancer Center, one of the leading cancer research institutions in the entire world, if they had ever had an issue with the soy and the complete, then why in the world would they use it in a study of their ovarian cancer patients? Okay, that study has already been published. It's finished and published. The researchers at MD Anderson were so impressed with the, the, the health results and their patient population compared to placebo that they're now doing a second follow-up study. So again, I'm not an expert at this, but I listen to the experts who stay current and relevant, relative, uh, rele relevant with the with the studies, and you know, not healthcare providers that are, were were outdated. I mean, I got two weeks out of four years of nutrition, two weeks of nutrition out of four years of med school. You know, we're not taught that stuff, uh, and things change, things evolve. I mean, soy is actually the healthiest plant, complete plant-based protein in the world. It's how it's processed that messes up. But when you low pro water wash it and low process it, it's like it took it right out of the ground. And so it's very, very, very safe. And so I like to think of the complete and the, and the capsules as bridging the gap. It bridges the gap between the reality of what we eat on a daily basis, whether that was good or not, and a more optimal amount of whole food based nutrition that provides a rich pool of antioxidants and phytonutrients from which our bodies are designed and knows exactly what to do with to contribute to ideal health. But I think as great as this is that for about the price of a cup of coffee, you get almost 50 different kinds of plants coursing through your bank every day. 
Think about that. For the about the price of a cup of coffee, you get up to 50 different kinds of plants forcing through your veins, making you healthy at a cellular level every day. Because that is where true health starts, is at a cellular level, from the inside out. What is your health worth to you? Now, what's your health worth to you? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about another product that the company just rolled out last January. You know, this is a company that you will never see sell toilet paper, toilet bowl cleaner, and all that other stuff. Okay, this is a very narrow focus company with six product lines. They all have to do with plants. And I'd like to say they go an inch wide in product line and a mile deep with quality and research. And this is a completely plant-based Omega that was launched last year. You know, most of the Omegas that you see on the market today derive their polyunsaturated fatty acids or omegas from fish or krill. But the fish or the krill actually have to eat algae to make that conversion inside their body. So the company's like, skip the fish, we'll go straight to the algae. And so that's where they harvest the majority of their omega-3s. But they round out the whole spectrum of five, six, seven, and nine with the oils that you get from cold pressed seeds. Things like tomato seed and sea buckthorn. It rounds out the rest of that profile. Each of these omegas has a specific beneficial role in human physiology. You know, by decreasing inflammation, improving cognitive health, improving cardiovascular health, uh, improving healthy skin and gums. And you guys, I just turned 78 the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's just totally. <laughs> All right, 76, I lied. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm not 76 either. I've had people come up and ask me that after I so I'm not telling you how old I am. But anyway, this is great. And what's really neat about this product is that. Um, when they flew all the healthcare providers to the world headquarters and down the road in Memphis, the, um, one of the, I raised my hand real quickly, are we going to do research on this? Gold standard research, absolutely. They're lining up studies to study this product like they have done with the capsules. So that's going to be really exciting um, to when that happens. Okay, so here we go. I am so sorry this guy's not alive anymore because he was like one of my favorite actors. But what I'm going to do now is pivot. And... Um, I want to just tell you a few stories. The reason why I put this slide up is if you look at really well-designed studies of which this company has, very well-designed studies, when you look at them and read them, are very boring. Okay? If you want something to put you to sleep at night, read a research paper. Okay? Because they're full of p-values and chi-square this, statistical analysis that, pie chart this, graph this, whatever really dry but when you can take that research and you can tie it in to people's stories about what happens to their bodies when they put whole food nutrition in it's absolutely amazing it's what makes the research come alive and so that's what I want to finish with is relate to some of the stories and then the science behind that before I do that I put this up Fockerty's of course way ahead of his time but this is true you know food be that medicine medicine be that food what you're about to hear in these stories is a food effect Juice plus is food, it's not a drug. It's not you know, a cure-all for cancer and all that stuff. Okay, But it's amazing when you put those thousands of nutrients into the body. This is an incredible machine we've been given. It, this body is gonna figure out what to do with it. It will be a unique experience for every single person depending on your own unique physiologic um, demands. And so pretty much every chronic disease condition in the human body falls under the umbrella of chronic systemic inflammation. Now. What is considered to be a normal immune inflammatory response in your body would be as if you were to get a cut. And that wound, as it heals, becomes inflamed, right? It gets hot, it gets red, it gets nasty for a while, and then it heals, that's normal. But when that inflammation goes haywire and becomes this low-level, small-grain, toxic inflammation, that has been linked to chronic disease conditions across the board. And so this is Shada. Um, Shada's a pharmacist in the Tucson, Arizona area. And for years, she suffered with debilitating foot pain, bilateral foot pain, to the point at which she would actually have to take ice packs or cool packs to work, um, just to stand on, just to get through the day. And when I had a discussion with her and sat down and got access to her medical records, this was her treatment plan when she had her foot pain between 2012 and 2015. During that period of time, okay, she saw over 20 different healthcare providers she had multiple differential diagnoses, from cochineal nerve damage to Lyme's disease to Crohn's to stress fractures. Thousands of dollars of diagnostic tests were spent on her to find out what in the world was causing her foot pain. And then thousands of dollars of drugs, prescriptions, medications, 
to try to help with her foot pain. And this is a picture of her closet that she sent me. This was kind of her life. You know, pills, scripts, herbs, lotions, splints, that was it for her. And, you know, gee, the mere suggestion to her treating physicians that concentrated fruits and veggies in capsules might arm her own body's ability um, to heal itself was met with this. <laughs> right? And again, you know, I'm, if you're a healthcare provider, I'm not knocking on you because I'm one too, but again, nutrition education is not part of the, our education. You know, food is food, right? Put it in your mouth and move on. Big difference. There's a big, big difference. But we knew better, so we started Shada on, you know, on Juice Plus. And it was interesting, she started in the latter half of July 2015. The beginning of July, she actually had a routine blood draw that was done. And at that time, she was a diabetic, her A1C was 6.6, .6, and she had a pretty ugly lipid profile. Within three or four months of her being on Juice Plus, she had another blood redrawn, and those numbers actually started to correct themselves. But more than anything else during that three to four month period, her doctors were slowly weaning her off of her medication to the point at which, at the end of October, the only thing she was taking was Juice Plus, and she was pain free. Now, that's, you go ahead. But please understand what I'm telling you, is I'm not saying, you know, throw down your crutches, you're healed, you can walk again. <laughs> please do not get that right. Um, but what happened to her is absolutely amazing. But what happened to her, right, would be a mere testimonial if it wasn't backed by the science. And I actually have two more studies to add to this. Multiple studies have shown that Juice Plus will decrease inflammation compared to placebo group by decreasing things like monocyte chemotactic protein, uh, decreasing macrophage inflammatory protein, decreasing RANTS, which is this huge acronym for an inflammatory molecule I can't pronounce. And a reduction in the big guys, tuna necrosis factor alpha and C-reactive protein. So, these are hardcore laboratory values, markers of inflammation that are decreased in the individuals who took Juice Plus compared to placebo. So the science backs up what happened to Shada. What happened to Shada was not a testimonial. What happened to Shada was not a placebo effect. What happened to Shada was backed by science. Plain and simple. So here's another great story. This is Becca. You guys are giving it away. You're not supposed to cheer yet. So this is a great story. So Becca um, suffered from a pretty rare disease called Takayasu's arthritis. And what that is is just an inflammatory condition of the large vessels that come out of the heart. And she was being treated at the, the Cleveland Clinic, which is like the top place to be treated for this. So she was diagnosed late 2011, early 2012, and because it's a, a very highly inflammatory condition, her doctors went ahead and put her on high-dose um, anti-inflammatory drugs, like high-dose steroids, high-dose methotrexate, high-dose azathioprine, and she had periods of you know, remission and then flare-ups, and in November of that year, she had severe flare-ups to the point at which she had not one but two massive strokes. Uh, and so because of that, the doctors at the clinic decided to do open heart surgery on her and bypass those inflamed vessels. So they did that in February 2013, but because she was on so many immunosuppressive drugs um, that she ended up getting a histoplasmosis infection in her lungs that disseminated throughout her whole body. And she told me she had about a 70% mortality. They're gonna need to put her on a vent. Um, things were not looking good. And so the, the question was, you know, what point did Juice Plus actually come into her picture? Well, you know what, it was pretty much right in the beginning. You know, and people are like, well, if it's that powerful, well then why didn't it help prevent all the others? Again, I'm not saying that this is a magic bullet, okay? But what it did do is it armed her body's ability to repair and heal. Because she had to learn to rewrite, rewalk, reread, and all that stuff after her strokes. To this day, she has no residual deficits. Okay, and as physicians, we know what to look for in a stroke, right? Open heart surgery. So her doctor said that, that she would be on medication the rest of her life and that she would be able to have kids uh, because of the stress on her heart. So we'll come back to that in a minute. And that fungal septicemia, right? Um, so she ended up not going on the ventilator. She ended up with no kidney damage, and that's key because one of the drugs they give you for disseminated histo or disseminated fungal infections is something called amphotericin B which is extremely toxic to kidneys, so she has no renal deficit and no pulmonary damage. After histoplasmosis, you, especially disseminated, you can expect a lot of pulmonary issues, um, and it is not, a, not an issue with her. And this is a quote from her doctors at the Cleveland Clinic, right? You're a complete miracle. So um, this is Becca 
immediately post-op after she had um, that bypass um, surgery. And I have pictures, but I'm gonna have her stand up because she's in here. So this is Becca. <laughs> That is not your Coca Cola right there. No, so. I, thought, I was so mad at my husband for making me hold that. There you go. I knew it was a reason. But again, you know, the, the, the science, the, the anti inflammatory, and I hadn't even gone into the other aspects of, of research that Juice Push shows how it optimized her physiology. Um, but again, the science backs her up. And this is her, I think, what, about a year, year and a half ago or so at the Cleveland Clinic, roughly. And this is her treating physician over here. Uh, and at the time, I think Becca had told me she, you were taking between 120 and 150 pills a week or something. By this point, I was on all of them. But in this one, you were. Right. And so what's neat is that they were weaning her down off of her medications throughout this whole period of time. And the one doctor at one point said that she couldn't have children, said, you know what, go out and have as many kids as you want. Wow. So she's got six already, right? Uh. <laughs> 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 well. <laughs> so again, but you know what's really cool is the science, what happened to Becca was real. You, you saw her alive and in person. I mean, when I tell this story and I go around the country, and Becca's not in the audience, and people are blown away. It's so true. She's optimizing her physiology in every aspect with plants, plant nutrients. So this one, another story, this one's a little bit closer home. This is my oldest stepson, Grant, a little guy here in yellow. Grant was a really sick kid with reactive airway disease or asthma. And to the point at which um, you know, he was always in and out of ERs. Um, he was constantly on nebulizers, constantly on steroids, constantly on antibiotics. Uh, my wife Heidi, his mom, had to, told me that she used to have to go in at night and check to make sure he's still breathing. I mean, it was that bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so my wife was desperately looking at you know, the hospital. You know, I see these kids in the ER. They come in sucking wind, you give them breathing treatments, you know. Nail them with some steroids, antibiotics, and they go back out and they're turf, they're, they're bouncing in and out. That was grand. And so Heidi, my wife, was looking for something natural that might arm Grant's own body's ability to, to heal itself. And so they were introduced to Juice Plus. She immediately put him on it, and within two months, 60 days, uh, he no longer needed nebulizers, no longer needed steroids, was not going back to the ER, and only needed an occasional antibiotic uh, if he had like an ear infection or a sore throat. And again, I see these kids all the time with, with this event, and, and I've seen the remarkable results that kids whose immune systems are all over the place, all you're doing is balancing out the immune system. That's all you're doing. But again, Grant's story would be a testimonial if it wasn't backed by the science. And multiple studies have shown that Juice Plus will optimize the immune system by increasing things like gamma delta T cells, which are fighter cells inside your body, increasing natural killer cytotoxicity, increasing interleukin-2, and again, decreasing tumor necrosis factor alpha. So again, the science, okay, the science backs up what happened to Grant. What happened to Grant was not a placebo effect, it wasn't just a mere story, it was backed by real science. So, Grant went on to swim at Arizona State and graduated last uh, June with his degree in physical therapy. He's practicing now in Atlanta on his own. And of course, that makes every mama happy. Right? <laughs> That's good. So before I tell, I, I actually don't have a good place to put this um, study before I tell my story and close it out. But I need to put this in because it really does tie into what I started the lecture off about. This is the latest study on Juice Plus, just published out of Australia. Again, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. When they found out that, that the individuals that were taking Juice Plus compared to placebo in this study had a decrease in lipogenesis or cholesterol production, and a decrease in inflammatory or inflammation as a decrease in inflammatory pathways. But the one thing they did in this study that's never been done in any controlled subject anywhere in the world, to my knowledge, is that they actually looked at the epigenomes, the switches on the outside of the DNA that dictate whether genes are getting turned on. And when they looked at it, they found that compared to the placebo group, the Juice Plus group had a favorable modulation or switching of over 1,600 of those epigenomes that had to do with cholesterol production, had to do with inflammation. So think about this, instead of having to take Crestor, how about turn the switch off? Mm, yeah. You know, instead of having to take Advil or Motrin, how about turning the switch off? 
Are we there? No. But is this an indication of the power mm-hmm. of the product and the nutrition? Yes. Absolutely. And one of the interesting things was, this was a 43-page research paper, and because I have a research background, I read the whole thing cover to cover. I fell asleep probably five or six times, but anyway. <laughs> but one of the things they, so this is just a handful of some of those epigenomes, those switches. And they weren't looking for this in this particular study, but some of those switches had to do with cancer genes, oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, genes. And they weren't looking for that. But again, I talked about in the beginning of the study, those genes can be switched on and off by lifestyle. The power of nutrition is amazing. And I'm sure one day I will have a, a few stories to tell about us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, just, I, I needed to tell you guys about it because it was really exciting for me. Because I've been talking about it for 10 years. So, so my story, I want to tell you uh, uh, before we close, and my story actually starts off with science. Um, this study was so profound, I say that it, 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 for people who are athletes out there, this was like the can opener for my brain and understanding how important uh, whole food nutrition is to exercise performance. This study was so profound that it was accepted and published in the top sports medicine journal in this country, Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. And it was a study that was done on the Austrian Special Forces Cobra Unit, which is their equivalent to our Navy SEALs, the big, rough, rugged guys. And basically, it was a seven-month study they did on these athletes, exercising them periodically during the seven-month window. There are two groups in the study. One group of athletes that got the dummy pill of the placebo, which is depicted in the red bars, and the other group of athletes that got juice plus, which is depicted in the green bars. And the researchers in this study want to know what kind of protein damage or protein muscle oxidation is occurring as a function of them exercising during the seven month window. And without going into great detail, what they found out from the beginning of the study at baseline to the final exercise session was that there was a significant accumulation of these oxidized or damaged proteins circulating around in these athletes' bodies that were not taking juice plus, that were taking the dummy pill, placebo. That's compared to the athletes that were taking juice plus, they didn't have any accumulation of those oxidized proteins in their bodies. So, what does all that science mean to you and me? Just within the last four or five years, study after study after study is now making the link between this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies to overtraining and overreaching syndromes. So you've seen athletes, this could be a little Johnny going off to soccer, all the way up to the elite pro athlete that start off a new season healthy. But as that season progresses and the training starts to get ramped up, they start to get more and more sore, more and more tired, more and more sick, more and more injured, where they're now making the link to this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies, not only within a particular season, but carry over from one season to the next. You know, over the, the years I've spoken hundreds, if not thousands of high-end athletes, and this can be a really hard message to get into them because they've had three or four good seasons. They're like, I'm good, I don't need any of this stuff. The question is at one point, at what point is their own internal endogenous antioxidant system that I put up that fancy slide, at one point is that gonna fail on its own unless you're putting a constant stream of micronutrients into that system. It will eventually fail and that's what happened in that previous study to those people who took the placebo. And so this is my, uh, my story, this is my finish at the Ironman World Championships in Kona. It took me um, 10 hours, 10 minutes, and 12 seconds. I'll never forget those 12 seconds as long as oh, I go. Lord. <laughs> well, oh, Lord. A long way down that chute. Um, but I want to finish by telling you my story, why I'm passionate about what I do, but why it's very different than what, what I was trained to do. You know, as, as physicians, we're trained to look for and treat disease. I mentioned that in the beginning. There's a place for that. And I spent many, many years doing that. But I've now spent many years on the other side of that wall called prevention. And it's amazing to me that I look back on all my years as a clinician that so many of the diseases that I was treating and writing multiple prescriptions for were completely preventable. That what we talked about. So many. Lifestyle. Prevention. And I actually had a pretty good race. I finished this race, went upstairs in the hotel, showered, came downstairs, ate dinner. And then said at the finishing line, watching people finish the races, the way you see televised every year, NBC is there with cameras, it's pretty cool. They're all over the place. And that wasn't to say that I wasn't sore or tired, because I was. I mean, that's a long, non-stop day. But I felt distinctly different in this race versus the year before when I did Ironman Florida. And had an absolutely miserable race at Ironman Florida. I was basically flat, fatigued, and tired going into race day itself, which I now know is because I had accumulated all those oxidized proteins in my body from all the voluminous training I was doing. Basically, I'd overtrained. Um, subsequently, I had a miserable race for about two to three days after race. I was so sore, um, I could barely walk. And for about a month after race, I was constantly sick. One cough, one cold. 
one upper respiratory infection. Basically, my body was trashed. And I hate to admit it, but at that time, um, I was taking up to eight vitamin, mineral, and herbal supplements. You know, I had a concoction of pills and herbs and things I was putting in my body based on the testimonials, not the research, the testimonials of my training partners. Hey, if it was working for them, it would probably work for me down the hatch without doing a lick of research. And based on some of the studies I presented to you guys tonight, they were actually, those, some of those, those, those herbs and vitamins were actually mechanistically hampering my body's ability to train harder and faster. And the only thing I did differently from that race in Florida to this race a year later um, was I was approached by a very attractive and intelligent woman who started engaging me in this conversation about oxidative stress that occurs when you exercise. And I didn't know what that was, because they don't teach doctors about oxidative stress. But she was very insistent that I take these fruits and veggies and capsules. Now, if you're a healthcare provider, and you know a healthcare provider, you know that we are one skeptical group of people. And I was a very skeptical person. What could fruits and veggies and capsules do for me that I wasn't already getting in a healthy plant-based diet, which had to be vegan? Um, but I did take them because I wanted to date her, <laughs> and now we're married. <laughs> and the reason why I, I, I put this up and I kind of knocked on myself is it really was, I've spoken to hundreds if not thousands of healthcare providers over the years. It was really hard for me to kind of wrap my Ivy League doctor brain around something as simple as fruits and veggies and capsules. It wasn't complicated enough for me. I, mean, I could pronounce, I, I could turn a bottle of juice plus around, I could pronounce everything in it because it was food. How can concentrated fruits and veggies and capsules be as powerful in the human body as some of the prescriptions I was writing for? But I did take them because I wanted to date her, and that is the honest to God. <laughs> Whatever good. it took, so, right? And I was training for Ironman Hawaii at the time, so I knew my body really, really well. And it wasn't right away, but about Two to three months into taking juice plus, I did start to notice some subtle, honey, anecdotal, you know, testimonial things that were happening to my body that in all my years as a collegiate swimmer and triathlete, I'd never noticed before. And since I was having a lot less muscle and joint pain, I was recovering a lot quicker between my training and racing sessions. And the other thing I noticed is I wasn't getting sick anymore. I just thought it was common for athletes that train really hard to get two or three colds a year, and that wouldn't happen. And the interesting thing was, all my training partners were still suffering from that stuff. So I knew that Juice Plus was filling in the gaps, filling in the rainbow of colors that I wasn't already getting in a healthy plant-based diet. But being the ever skeptic that I was, I just thought it was in my head. I thought it was a placebo effect. So that's when I decided to look at the research on the pocket. At that time, there were like 15 to 18 studies now, it's over 35. But two of those studies on Juice Plus were published in my sports medicine journal, the one I just brought to you guys. Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. That's the journal I get in my mailbox every month. That's the top sports medicine journal in this country, let alone the world. Are you kidding me? You know, they can study fruits and veggies and capsules with a placebo in humans, not rats, mice, or test tubes, using gold standard protocol, get those kinds of results, and then have them accepted and published in one of the top sports medicine journals in the world. Boom. For me, the light bulb went off. Big time. So before we close out, I just want to tell you one more story. This is a very intimate um, and personal story. I hope this will inspire you, as it does for me. This is, um, this is my younger brother, Will, right? And we believe that my younger brother uh, was born with a heart defect that didn't manifest itself until he was in his 40s. And he ended up having um, strokes, he ended up having heart attacks. When they finally did the workup on him, <laughs> Uh, it turned out that he had ventricular aneurysm, which is now pound chain of the ventricle that caused the blood to clot and that caused all these issues. So he was on multiple med medications, in and out of hospitals, implantable defibrillator pacemaker, the whole works. And about a year and a half ago, I was lecturing on the East Park East Coast uh, for the winter. I got a call that, that my brother went into sudden cardiac arrest, sudden cardiac failure. And they shocked him a bunch of times, uh, brought him back, immediately took him to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale and immediately put him, when they evaluated him, put him on the heart transplant list. His heart was completely done. And literally, they, there he lay a flat in bed at the Mayo Clinic for probably two months waiting for a heart. And unfortunately, at that time, um, a heart never showed up. And so what they do at that point is because his heart was so bad, his injection fraction was like 15, it was doing nothing. What they do at that point is they do open heart surgery on you. 
and they put a pump in your heart, we call an LVAD or a left ventricular assist device, and that acts as a bridge to get you to a transplantable heart. So that was the next procedure, and you weren't gonna have anything to do with it. I can remember walking in that room, you've been crying, it's like, I'm done, I am finished. I, I don't want to do this. I mean, I've made my peace with the Lord, I'm done. I'm out. And I'm like, no, you're not. No, I'm not by a long shot. And I remember shutting the door, we cried, and it's like, you can't do this. You know, you, you have a wife to live for, you have a son to live for, you one day will be the recipient of, of a heart that a family's loved one had to lose their life for. You're going to carry on a legacy. You know, you ultimately will have an incredible story to tell. And you have lots of chapters to write, but you need to do this. And so um, he went through with that procedure. And this is him immediately uh, post op. I know it's a little. It's a little hard to see, it's a little dark and grainy, but um, this is him down here, and all of these pressors, medications, and machines, you know, as a physician, I know all these things, but when you're on the other side, it's pretty scary. You know, it's very humbling, you know, as, as a physician, because we tend to put ourselves in boxes and not think and get emotional. So that was him immediately um, post-op. This was him, and I want to say, um, about two to three weeks after that particular procedure. So, um, the reason I put this up is a couple of things. Number one, it's, it's personal for me. It's, it reminds me that that life is precious. And like I said, as physicians, we tend to become callous, especially ER doctors. We see people, we treat them, we treat them. And life is so precious. So I put this up for me as a reminder every single time. But I put this up for you guys for a specific reason. Because you know what? Um, my brother really never had a choice between the apple or the scalpel. You know, my brother was dealt a bad hand right from the beginning. He didn't have a choice. I would dare say that almost every single one of us in this room tonight, we still have this choice. No matter where you are on your health journey, you still have a choice to make. Okay, to do this the best you can and avoid that. The apple makes more sense than the scalpel. Okay. So, uh, what happened to my brother? So, he ended up getting that L-bed put in. Four months after that LVAD, uh, that, that pump, uh, he got a call and got a transplanted heart. And this is us at Christmas celebrating. And that's my brother right now. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Look at my mom. She's so stoked, man. <laughs> I swear I think my mom snuck in a flask of wine. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, I have my brother back. And, and really, what it was for him, and that video shows you, is that it was just one simple step in front of another, one foot in front of the other, and there it is today. So the bottom line is life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by change. So when you leave tonight, think about this. What would be a simple change for you to do that would be a healthy change for you? Maybe it's putting more plants into your body. Okay, maybe it's starting an exercise program, or if you're already exercising, being more regular with it. Maybe it's drinking more water. Whatever it is, please understand that what I've shown you tonight there on the left, okay, it's not a magic bullet, okay? But what it is, is a catalyst for better health. There isn't a single aspect of human physiology that is not gonna benefit by putting whole food nutrition into it. It just depends on what your body's unique physiological demands are going to be. So the bottom line is, it really is about a healthy living revolution. I'm so proud to be a part of this company now for over 10 years. Um, as a physician who knew nothing about nutrition, you were not taught any of that stuff as I told you, uh, the power of nutrition is amazing to me, which is why I beat a path um, to make sure that people know this information. What you do tonight, uh, when you leave here with this information, is totally up to you. But I do hope you'll lean up against this. You know, think about what this will do for you, think about this, what this will do for your families, and then think about the people around you that you love, right? Um, this is a hurting world in which we live, and you can be a beacon of hope for them, okay? You can be a beacon of hope because this is hope right here. What I'm offering to you tonight isn't a miracle, but hope, mm. right? And so, you know, the, the key that I want to end with, just like my brother put one foot in front of another, and it wasn't, it was a challenge for him. Um, I want you to think about this too, because we all have a story to tell, right? We all have chapters to write, but you cannot tell your story and you cannot successfully write those chapters unless you have your health. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where it all starts with the hope. So I want to thank you guys so much for having me. Wow.